This sleeper course absolutely changed the way I use Blender from the ground up. It is an absolute workflow monster. Today, we're talking about QB City. So on first thought going into this course, QB City, I thought, you know, we're gonna make a low poly city and that's what we're gonna do. I wasn't super excited about that aspect of it. Honestly, I only got it because I wanted to look into Blender's asset library. I wanted to look into how to use the asset browser to the best of my abilities so that I can really speed up my workflow. What I didn't know was that this course would become my favorite Blender course I've ever taken and it would completely change the way that I use Blender. And this is not an exaggeration. So if you're looking at getting QB City, just know that the low poly city is only one fun aspect of the course. Really, even if you don't set out to make anything like that, you can have any sort of ambition and goal of any sort of project you want in Blender and this will absolutely change the way you go about that because it's all about efficiency, saving yourself from headaches and so many little tips and tricks here that I learned along the way that save my ass on a day-to-day -day basis while I use Blender. A couple of those things would be modeling in a very smart and simple way. It is a low poly city, but there's still some higher level advanced, if you would say, sort of modeling techniques that you can utilize that will actually speed up your workflow. As somebody that just came up on four years using Blender, I actually learned a few things about modeling, which I didn't expect at all because this is a low poly sort of QB city. I didn't think I'd learn anything in a modeling section at all, but especially in chapter two, I was having a blast. Things like buildings designed to fit within a grid layout, as well as street sections, which need to seamlessly snap together geometrically and be seamless within the material. And another thing I learned a lot about was material creation, something that can really get out of hand if you're working on a larger project, in particular, if you're working on like a short film or maybe you're trying to make some game assets or something. I'm not exactly sure what your goals are, but if you have a large scene and you start making very minuscule changes to one material, it can quickly add up to be, instead of one metal material, you have have 15 or 55 of them and the only thing that's different is just a couple of things so it's really a shame and it gets out of hand and you forget to change them but no if you're not you no longer have to do that if you take this course Kent teaches a very effective way using vertex colors to optimize and minimize the amount of materials you use throughout your scene in addition to this we also learned a little bit about geometry nodes and this is really fun because if you're looking at you know how, how do I make procedural buildings this is a way that you can learn maybe the first couple of steps into doing that. You can see the vision of how to do that. What we do in this course is we make a parametric building. It adds different levels that you create and you can control, you know, how tall the building is, how wide it is and whatnot and scatter some assets on there in a very particular manner. And now a question I always have when I do these course reviews is who is this for? Who would really need this? And I can feel confident in saying that this course is one of those things where it really is across the board, no matter what you're trying to do in Blender, this will teach you so much. And it's why it's my favorite course, because it'll teach you so many different things that'll come in handy almost every day. So they're just little tips and tricks that you can implement into your workflow. It's not like super specific. It's not super niche driven. Like it's just focusing on one type of modeling or something. It just made it a lot easier to consume. In this course, you get to do a little bit of everything and that's what I love about it. If you have decided to take the course or maybe you're taking it right now and you are running into a couple of headaches, here's a couple of tips. A few things that I ran into during this course, one of them was vertex colors just not really working or appearing to not work. This is probably because your color attribute is labeled incorrectly. I think Blender had an update between the time I took the course and the time that the course was recorded and I think it changed the default labeling for vertex colors. So just always check that. If you're having a problem with a vertex color not showing up, go and check the actual attribute label in the vertex color. Number two, I would say always double check the vertex paint strength. If your colors don't look the same as Kent's and you're really trying to get it to be that way. There were a couple of times where I was like, yo, dude, this road is not as dark as, as yours. And that was because the actual painting strength was wrong. I know, dumb, but just make sure, you know? Number three, there's a few times in a course where you have to set shade auto smooth. And this can now actually be done by right clicking to access the object context menu. And you just click set 
shade auto smooth. And number four, when you're using, and number four, when you're using geometry nodes, press O. If you've noticed, you can't view your nodes the same way. The viewer node doesn't work in the same way that it does in the uh, compositor or in the shader nodes. But if you click on the node that you want to view and you press O, it will do exactly what you're looking for. As far as downsides to this course, I really didn't have any other than a couple of times, depending on how you do tutorials and courses, how you consume them. Uh, what I do a lot of times is I just follow it step by step, but sometimes I don't do that. Like at the end of this course, I didn't. There are a couple of times where Kent goes down the wrong path and you don't really know that until like, I say like five minutes. And then you have to, uh, then he goes, oh, wait, no, actually I messed up. <laughs> and then you go back and you have to kind of fix that. Basically some time could have been saved. I think a couple of times by editing those portions out where he experimented and it didn't work out maybe, or he just did the wrong thing and messed up or whatever. Uh, I think there was a couple of mistakes that did make it a little bit difficult at times, but it's a really small critique. And honestly, that's a part of being an artist in the first place. Experimenting is part of creativity and also mistakes are as well. So so it's not something that I can really knock them on too much. So all in all, Cubicity is just a workflow juggernaut. Trust me when I say it.